What's up, guys? John here. Titan Talk Tuesday. Going virtual, guys. I'm not in the studio today. I'm not in the office. But uh, we got a lot to talk about today. A lot of good conversation. A lot of different things we're going to cover today. So uh, I'm waiting for everybody to join in so we can start going over some of these things. And some of the things we're going to cover today is the therapy of the week, Dimosine Alpha 1, which is very important. It's an immune-boosting peptide. I'm going to go over all the benefits of it what it is, how it works, so you guys are straight. Going good, Kenny. How you guys doing out there, everybody? Thank you guys for joining me on Instagram and Facebook. We're going to talk about healthy or physically fit. We're also going to talk about some of these airlines, what's going on with them, this new COVID drug, Rendesivir, you know, and cost, because, you know, that's, that's going to be a factor here and uh, everything that's going on out there because people are definitely going to want to do it. AMC, a big big time movie theater chain, in their release date, moving things back. We'll talk about that. Facebook, you know, uh, they're losing billions of dollars. They've lost over seven billion dollars, and probably more in counting. We'll talk about why. Uh, poll question. We'll talk about that. Have you ever tried any immune system boosting therapies? Another important question for you guys out there, especially right now. What's going on? So, how you guys doing? Gene, L, Caracho, how you doing? Fast forward a lifestyle. Thank you guys for all joining in. Thank you guys for all on Facebook joining in. YouTube, thanks a lot, guys. So let's get this bad boy started. Let's talk about the therapy of the week, which is thymosine alpha one. All right. So thymosine alpha one is a peptide. It's it's a small protein produced naturally by the thymus gland. Okay. Thymosine alpha one. Don't get it confused with TB500, thymosine beta-4. A lot of people do get that confused because you're like, oh, thymosine, oh, that's TB500. No, but they're both produced in the thymus gland. So how you doing, Raul J? How you doing? Raul Jr., excuse me. My man, he's been putting up some work. I've been watching you. Case Farm, how you doing? Jared Delgado, what's going on? So let's talk about this. Thymosine alpha-1. What does it do, right? It's got a really cool name, right? It enhances the function of certain immune cells called T cells and dendritic cells. So it's effective for acute and chronic infections, helps eradicate the unhealthy cells and stops the infection or cancer growth as well. Uh, suppresses tumor growth, increases vaccine effectiveness, and protects, protects against oxidative stress so or oxidative damage. And, you know, people are like, well, what's, what's oxidative damage? How is that really going to hurt me? Everybody has stress. All right, so there's good stress and bad stress. And after stress builds up, bad stress like oxidative stress or oxidative damage causes major inflammation in the body. And this oxidative damage causes problems all over the body. It can do with health problems, cancer, the whole nine. So you want to stay away from oxidative stress and you want to keep inflammation down in the body. So that's one thing this is good for, right? And the way that this works is, is T cell production an action within the body that's, a, you know, it's vital for your immune system. They do exactly what they say. These killer cells, you know, they go down, they track down these bad cells in the body, and at that point try to eradicate them. You know, they hunt them down, destroy your body's own cells, and their cancers infected with bacteria or viruses. Um, help our cells work with the other cells of the immune system to orchestrate and carry out appropriate immune responses. So especially right now, COVID-19 is out there. There's all different types of other infections and viruses and stuff like that. So let's not just single out COVID-19 because I'm not going to say this is a cure or anything for COVID-19. But we do know what thymosin alpha-1 does. And at that point, it might be very, very helpful if you're in that circumstance or trying to prepare your immune system. You know, this, this drug is it's manufactured and it's commercially available as Zadaxin. Zadaxin. Zadaxin, excuse me. And at that point, it's out there. And this is being used for cancer patients that are going through chemotherapy, people that have infections, Lyme disease, all these different immune uh, compromised people do take this as well. But Varus, how are you doing out there? So you want to boost your immune system as, as much as possible. And we talk about different immune system boosting therapies um, like antioxidants or super antioxidants like glutathione, injectable vitamin C, some of these different ones that are out there. 
But Dimosian Alpha 1 is probably the one most important and probably does work almost the best as far as this goes. And right now, everybody's stacking up on Thymosin Alpha 1. And the reason is because we know we have spikes in COVID-19 out there, especially here in Florida. Uh, Tampa, Florida is one of the you know, biggest counties that I think that are getting affected. We obviously know Broward and all those down south of Florida are getting affected too, but we're seeing spikes like, like you can't believe. Now, the virus, COVID-19, is viral. It also causes secondary infections. And that's what we really got to worry about. This is secondary infections like pneumonia. So you can get upper respiratory infections, stuff like this that you're going to need to treat with antibiotics, usually in most cases. And that's what they're doing in the hospitals right now. I've talked to multiple doctors that work in strictly COVID hospitals or COVID wings or floors, and they're telling me exactly what's going on. So it's not like I'm making this up or going in the dark. I'm telling you exactly what's on the front lines and exactly what they're telling me because I'm more interested than ever. Especially in this. This is crazy. I thought once this lockdown was done, we were pretty much getting over this. You know, they said the curve's going down. We're going to start opening back up. Now, what's happened? We've had a spike like you wouldn't believe, right? We knew cases were going to go up. The good thing is they're saying, they're saying that deaths, okay, are on the downswing. So we're not doing as many deaths and hospitalization. But, man, I'll tell you, just from my area and what's going around out here, I can tell you guys that I don't know how it's going to look. Is it going to get worse? Is it going to get a lot worse? I don't know. And even the median age has came down. Where it was 65 and older, then it went to 50s. Now, it, you know, it's in the 20s and 30-year-olds. And some of these guys are getting hospitalized. Most people are not showing symptoms, but there's a lot of people out there that are showing symptoms. So at that point, this is something that we really have to, you know, watch out for. And you really got to boost your immune system. And that shouldn't just be for COVID-19, like I said. This should be for everyday use as far as that goes. Because think about it. We're forgetting about all the other infections or diseases out there. And I'm talking about the flu, the real flu, okay? I'm talking about strep throat. I mean, sinus infections, chronic sinusitis. There's a lot of different things out there that we just, you know what? We're not even thinking about this anymore. But this is what you guys should be thinking about because it's out there still. It literally is out there. You know, these different diseases, viruses, and strains or infections are out there. So we've got to make sure that we're boosting our immune system. And we want it the strongest ever, you know, as far as this goes. So Thymosine Alpha-1, it's an injectable peptide we offer here at Titan Medical Center. If you guys want to know more about this, you guys can call or text 727-389-3220. You can also go to our social media pages. So if you're on Instagram or Facebook, go check it out. We just posted about it today. I'll post actually some other um, good, um, you know, basically testimonials on Thymosin Alpha 1 um, and, and some of the different things it might be good for for you guys. So big shout out to everybody out there. So Thymosin Alpha 1, I got the question of how much do you do blood work at the new channel side location? So yes. So we do do blood work at the new channel side location. We do blood work in-house. We also primary, we offer primary care services, urgent care services, all these different things for people at the channel side location. Now, the, the, the caveat to that is this. For at least one more week, we're on total lockdown at Titan Medical Center. We are total lockdown. That means nobody in unless it's staff. But if you want to do blood work, it's not a problem. We can send you to a LabCorp location in your zip code, anywhere you're at, so we can get the blood work done, no problem. Also, we can see you telemedicine for anything you want. Big shout out to my brother out there, Big Drew. How you doing, bro? I hope you're good. My man Antonio, how you doing? And all my guys are getting on here. It's, it's, it's crazy. Susie, what's going on? So she was in a COVID hospital, I'm pretty sure in New York. She did a great job out there. Big shout out to her. We do service Hawaii. All right, guys? We service Hawaii. So you guys know. How about I've... Okay. All right, Green, I don't know what that was. How about I've... All right, my man's all good. I'm loving it. All right, so we talked about the most in Alpha 1, how important it is, not just for COVID-19 possibly, but for everything else, infections and all these diseases out there and stuff like that. I want you to look into it if you haven't. If you want more information, like I said, call or text our number, 
We'll be happy to go over it with you. And now the price of it. So that was a question on here. So usually for a one month supply of it, it's $275. Now this is a serious, serious peptide. And it's a serious dosage. So it's 15 milligrams, which is a lot. You're going to dilute this. It comes usually life-wise in a powder. And you're going to dilute it with the bacteriostatic water that gets sent to you from the pharmacy. We service nationwide. No in-person appointment necessary. Thank you, Big Drew. I love it. He's always there. He always got my back. So if I miss something or I'm not saying something, he definitely chimes in and tells me what it is, especially about the podcast. <laughs> we'll call that later. So, uh, so thymosin alpha one. So it's really, really serious. I want you guys to look into it. It's helped a number of different people. And I'm, like I said, not just for viruses or infections, even cancer patients that are going through chemo and stuff like that. So please look into it. Even if you have a loved one, possibly boyfriend, girlfriend, it's really, really good. All right. So let's talk about the next thing, because this has something to do with your immune system too, I guess. And it will be effective for COVID-19 healthy versus physically fit. I get it all the time. John, I'm healthy. Okay. All right. You're healthy. What does healthy mean? So for example, if you're obese, your BMI is above 30, uh, you know, you're having some other issues maybe, but you go into the doctor and you run a basic blood test of the liver, kidneys, you know, maybe cholesterol panels in there and everything looks good. Your doctor's usually going to tell your primary care, Hey, you're healthy. You're healthy as a horse. And then you feel good, right? You, you go out the door. You're like, listen, I'm healthy. I, I feel great. Right. But are you physically fit? Now that's a whole different question because you can be healthy, especially internal organs but you're not physically fit. So don't go around saying, listen, I'm physically fit and healthy. If your BMI is above 30, you got issues, okay? And that's what they say for COVID-19. That's where it's affecting is BMI is 30 and above. And that usually means that you're overweight or obese. Now there's one caveat to that. You could be like Big Drew, weigh 300 pounds, you know, be 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", and still be counted as your BMI being above that but you're not overweight or obese. Your body fat percentage is 10 or 12% like Drew's. I'm just using Drew as an example. It is what it is. Even me, at 215 pounds or 220 pounds what I was, at that point when I went for my BMI at six foot, I'm overweight, right? But I'm not. I'm at 10% showing abs, veins. At that point, I could run miles. I could do push-ups. No problem, no exhaustion. That's the difference. You want to be physically fit. Now, physically fit means you're going to be more healthier. Your blood work will show right now that you're healthy. But can you drop down and do 50 push-ups? Can you run a mile, right? Can you do some of these different things? Now, if you're physically fit, you usually can. You can pass a PT test or a physically, you know, a, a physical training test. That's what they do in the Army to get in. Now, I know that some of these standards have lowered over the years. Even to be police officers, it's lowered. So at that point, Really, that, that's what it is. You want to be physically fit. So doing exercise of some sort. It doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to become physically fit in like a week or a day. You know, if, if you've let your body go for 10 years, you haven't done any exercise, you know, it's going to take some time to get in that routine and start really getting physically fit. But it's a good thing to look at and make sure you're holding yourself to some of these standards to be physically fit. You know, I mean, this will help you. Not just now, but down the road when you're really going to come into possibly some of these health problems like diabetes, like high blood pressure. I, I bring some up all the time. The stronger your body is, the more it's going to be able to withstand. So my example is here. You train your whole life. Now you've come into some contact with, let's say, COVID-19, which puts you down. And it probably won't because they know that the more healthy you are, usually you won't have as many symptoms or you'll get through it a lot easier. It's usually people with underlying problems that affects the most or immune compromised issues. And that's what being physically fit helps too. It helps boost the immune system. Your body is putting a little stress on it, you know, when you're working out and stuff like that, but it's coming back with your immune system. So at that point, look into being physically fit and healthy. Don't just say, hey, listen, I'm healthy. I went to the doctor and told me I'm healthy as a horse, right? So at that point, just look into it. Make sure you guys are good. I want to make sure everybody's taken care of out there. Everybody's healthy as you possibly can. If you have problems 
or you want to be physically fit or healthier on the inside and the outside, that's one thing that we can help you out with too. And we do everything from nationwide blood testing, nationwide hormone replacement therapy, medical weight loss, vitamin amino acid injectable therapies, rejuvenation detox, peptides, and a lot, lot more. So just make sure you guys are checking in with your health. You know, health is the one priority. I always stress this with every patient and athlete that comes to me. I don't care how you look on the outside. You better look just as good as on the inside. Because if your inside's not good, your outside's going to be crap. It might not be it today or tomorrow, but later on, you might have problems. And that's really where it's going to come to play. So don't just strengthen your immune system or your muscles, strengthen your immune system too. That's key. And Drew did bring up a good point too about the food sensitivity testing. So, you know, if you're eating this different nutritional diet, right, and you think that it's affecting your body, so you might get bloating or you might not feel good after you eat something, but it's good for you. So it could be broccoli or, or chicken or, or, or beef or whatever it is. The best thing you can do is we do a food allergy testing through blood, right? And at that point, you can tell if you have sensitivities to some of these foods. And if you take that out of the mix, you probably will get better results. You'll probably feel better. You know, overall, it's going to be better for your health. So at that point, the food allergy testing is going to be a good one to possibly do if, if you want to look at what's really going on and what's going to be the best for your diet. So be physically fit. Be healthy. Get on the right track. If you have not been on the right track, now's the time. Start today. Don't put it off till tomorrow. Start today. And it doesn't have to be a lot. It can literally, after you get off of this, or even when you're on this, get down and bust out 20 push-ups. Do 20 sit-ups. Start there and move your way up. Go up that mountain and progress. That's what it's all about, progression and consistency. Everywhere in life, anything you do, progression and consistency should be a part of it. And don't do it half-ass. Anything you do in life is not worth doing half-ass. Because you'll probably have to go back and put more time and invest more time to get it done the right way. All right? And nobody likes half-ass work. Not me or you. I guarantee it. Okay? So that, that can go for anything. Roofing, uh, your workouts, nutrition, you know, the way where you wash your clothes, whatever it may be. So let's go on to the next one we got here. So this was pretty funny. I looked at this and I was like, oh, this is kind of crazy. So... American Airlines and United Airlines. These are two huge airlines. So before this, all the airlines were going to run at 80% capacity. Um, and most of the airlines like Southwest and Delta are actually knocking out the middle row of these seats. So when you go to plane, you just three to a row and they're knocking out the middle row because they want some sort of social distancing which I think is very responsible of those airlines to do because they're really not looking at profits at that point. Well, American United Airlines came out and said, we're going to run at full capacity. You know, probably not a smart thing to do right now, especially with the ventilation in airlines or, you know, airports. Uh, but when you get on the airplane, you're going to be right next to each other, like to a T. What if that person coughs next to you or sneezes next to you? You're probably going to flip out. No matter if you have a mask on or not, and it might not mean they have COVID-19, but they could. Who knows? So at that point, if you don't have an N95 on and wearing goggles, you could possibly contract COVID-19 or whatever else they may have, whether it be the flu or even bacteria like, um, like I said, like strep throat. That's, that's a really common one that a lot of people do get. So at that point, I think it's very irresponsible of these airlines. That's just my opinion. You know, I have my opinion like everybody else. You know, some people might say, oh, it doesn't matter. We see a lot of people out there, ah, oh, COVID-19 is not that serious, like the flu. I mean, I personally know of people that have gotten really sick, that are young, vibrant from COVID-19. So it kind of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, hey, listen, you really don't know unless you go through it. So unless you have had COVID-19 and you've tested positive for COVID-19, why the hell are you talking about it? Have you had it? You're speculating just like everybody else out there. And I understand it from the outside looking, looking in, it might not look that bad. I've definitely seen it. I felt like that kind of in the first wave. I'm like, damn, I don't even know anybody that has COVID-19. Like personally, right? You know, different states I did. 
but here in Florida, like personally, like my friends or, or, you know, loved ones or anything like that. Now I know a ton. So at that point, like I, I let them talk about it all day. Yeah. They must be hurting pastor. They're definitely hurting for pastors. So even with these airlines talking about filling for full capacity and the reason they did this, it wasn't because they just said, Oh, we're just going to run full capacity. They had a ton of people scheduled for flights and those people didn't want to cancel their flights. So at that point, I think they were just like, you know what? We're just going to open up the planes, run these planes like they should be. And that, that's what it is. So I still think it's a little irresponsible for them to go full capacity. We're not even doing full capacity everywhere else. I mean, we just shut down the, the bars here in Florida, you know? So at that point, like, should air, air you know, should these, <laughs> these planes be running full capacity? I don't think so. But like I said, that's just my opinion. Everybody's got one. So... You guys, let me know what you guys think about it. You guys think they should run a full capacity? I don't think so. That's for sure. All right. So talking about COVID-19, I'm sorry, but, you know, this is this is a really dominating subject with me. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's dominating the news. I know the news ain't the best place to look, but it's all around us. So I, at that point, like, this is, like, everywhere. So COVID-19, the new drug, Rendesivir, awesome new drug. They've got a lot of good studies on this, talking about recovery time, up to 33% faster on Redesivir, and actually saving some bad patients that were on their way uh, to possible ventilation. I got to love this. The reason is, is because Redesivir is out there. It's awesome. It's been working. I personally know people that have had to take Redesivir in the hospital that were getting worse and worse and worse each day. Declining health possibly having to go on a ventilator and getting rendesivir and literally coming back very, very shortly. It is crazy when he told me this. So it was really cool. But he had to fight for him to get rendesivir. You know, up in the air, is he bad enough? Should this work? You know, should we? And he was like, listen, you better give me that damn drug. And I would be the exact same way. He literally told me that. He had to tell them. He was like, listen, you guys are messing with my life. You better give me this Rendesivir or I'm going on Facebook Live and I'm telling everybody that this hospital is not treating their patients correctly. And you know what? Boom. They gave him the Rendesivir and he definitely got he got out of the hospital. You know, he's a lot better. His, his health, you know, it rapidly inclined instead of declined, which is huge. I love hearing these stories. If you guys got these stories, let me know. Please. All right, so the new drug, Rendesivir. So it's a really good drug. We know that. It's a new drug. And, you know, with new drugs, there's a lot of R&D that goes in it. That means research and development for pharmaceutical companies. And what comes with that? A hefty price tag. They said they spent over a billion dollars on this drug for R&D research, development, and testing. So Rendesivir. Now we know it works. It's awesome. What is the cost going to be? That's the next question. It's, it's a good question to ask. Now, if you have government insurance, they're talking about this drug being like $2,100 around that. Now, that's where the insurance company is going to pay. We don't know what your deductible is going to be on that. Private insurance, it's going to be about $3,240, $3,240 uh, just for the drug for Rendesivir. So we don't know what you're going to have to pay out of that for your deductible more what that is that could be different for everybody right you could have to pay the whole price who knows now the thing about this is that you won't be able to get rendesivir from a primary care from titan or anything like that you actually have to be in the hospital which is also going to come with a hefty price tag i've seen some of these hospital visits get up to 200 300 on their bills ridiculously crazy guys then you're going to have the drugs on top of it, what they're going to have to give you. And it might be Redesivir along with an antibiotic IV, which is intravenous. And this is crazy. And like we're seeing here, Big Drew brings up a good point. We don't really know the long-term effects. Now, you know, it's really worth uh, reward versus, you know, like what's going to go wrong, basically, right? Is the risk worth the reward? Um, and Rendesivir is usually used on patients that are on, you know, they're, they're getting on the last leg almost, you know, and they're getting there. They're rapidly declining their health. So at that point, I think if it was me in that situation as an opinion or uh, as me personally, 
if I was on my last leg and I needed remdesivir, I'd probably take it, guys. No matter what the long term effects was, because you might not know. And it's it's a good it's a good uh, it's a good question. You know, should I take this drug? Should I not take this drug? They're using dexamethasone in hospitals too, which is a steroid. It's a corticosteroid. It's not an anabolic steroid. So at that point, what happens is it brings down inflammation. But there's a caveat and a flip to that coin. When you take dexamethasone, what happens is it, it literally comp compromises the immune system. It actually suppresses it a little bit, okay? But it's effective at lowering inflammation in the body. Now, inflammation in the body with this drug has been crazy. From brain inflammation, COVID-19 has actually like literally gotten the spinal fluid uh, it's got into cerebral fluid in the brain. This can cause viral meningitis. I just talked to a neurologist today. We got the information. Uh, who is a patient of Type Medical Center and is actually local and is dealing with these cases. And he told me about the different things. And viral meningitis, meningitis is not a joke. All right. So when it's viral meningitis, that's a whole different thing on top of it. You know, and so you have to deal with these different things and looking for these different things like inflammation in the body and want to keep inflammation down. And we talked about inflammation and oxidative stress earlier. So you want to make sure that this is on the lower end or you're suppressing this the best that you possibly can. Now, thymosin alpha-1 will do it. Glutathione is a huge proponent of lowering inflammation in the body. It's also a super antioxidant, which can also help you get through, hopefully, and recover faster if you're sick, if you have hangovers. You know, at that point, it is very, very strong. So remdesivir, new drug. Hopefully, you know, at that cost, I mean, they're going to make a lot of money, but hey, listen, they're going to probably hopefully save a lot of lives. So I hope, uh, I hope Rendesivir, I hope these other, these other drugs, therapeutics come out. I hope we can treat this because it doesn't look like COVID-19 is going away. You know, they said that, hey, listen, it was going to disappear and stuff like that. It hasn't even, it hasn't even passed its first wave. We don't know what it's going to do, um, you know, here in the future. So in the fall. Um, and that's probably going to be, you know, it's it's going to be a mystery until then. We'll see. You know, we're just going to have to ride this thing out. And they're saying that everybody's going to probably get it until a vaccine comes out. And then who's going to get a vaccine? It took a percentage of a poll of Americans who would take the vaccine. Forty nine percent of Americans said they would take the vaccine. And the rest of the percentages, I think it was like 30 percent said, um, I'm not sure yet. And then 20 percent or it was like 21 percent, excuse me, said that. They're not going to take the vaccine, okay? And the vaccine has been fast-tracked. So usually vaccines take years to develop, uh, human trials to see what long-term effects were, to Drew's point on here. So at that point, it's been fast-tracked because of all the deaths and what's happened around the world. It hasn't just happened in the United States. It happened around the world, which in more news today, European Europe is going to ban us, us Americans, and most of the hotspots and stuff like that. We're not allowed to travel to Europe. And I, I can't hate on them or say they're wrong, we banned them from coming in our country when they were hot spots. So I would do the exact same to us, I guess, if we were in that same position. So you can't hate on them. Big, bad, sucky news for me anyway, and Sharice, and I know Drew and a couple of us out there. Even, even art, okay? So AMC has moved back their opening. That's a movie theater. It's, it's pr pr pretty dominant here in Florida. Um, so July 30th. Sucks. Who wants to go see a movie? You know, it just sucks. It really does suck. So at that point, listen, man, you know, I can understand why they're doing it. Totally understand. Health, health, health is number one and safety should be number one. So I understand. But it does suck. So movies won't be back probably till August, I'm thinking. They hopefully, they don't move it back even more. I don't know. They might. Who knows? All right. Another big one of the news that I thought was pretty crazy. Facebook. Losing billions of dollars. I know, right? How does Facebook lose billions of dollars? Pretty crazy. But uh, here's what's going on. So a lot of people were upset with Facebook saying that, you know, they should monitor or I want to call it censor, right? They want, they want to censor, you know, uh, some of these politicians out there talking or hate groups or whatever you want to call them. And at that point, they're mad because some of the things have not been censored or, you know, taken down or whatever it is. And uh, these advertisers are pulling out. They're pulling out in July. What's up, Daddy Shock? How you doing, man? So they're pulling out their advertising. And there's some pretty big advertisers in there. And 
pretty big names that you probably know. Let's go over a couple. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, North Face, Hershey's, Honda. Um, I think uh, Starbucks was in that mix, too, and, and a couple other ones, which is pretty crazy. What's up, Frost Nightwing? How you doing? Okay, so three more. Art just told me, too, that happened today, and I did read about it. Thank you, Art. Ford, Adidas, and Denny's. And there's more, okay? And there's probably going to be more that jump on that bandwagon. But let's talk about this. Let's, let's talk about financial sense, all right? So I understand that totally, all right? So these advertisers are getting out because they're getting pressure from people on the outside that buy their products. But what are they pulling out for? They're pulling out because, you know, Facebook is not censoring or taking down some of these different things that are out there, some of these posts. Now, I definitely think that some of these people out there should probably be, you know, maybe censored a little bit. But when we start censoring one person, we're going to have to censor everybody. And then when do we stop censoring? That's where, you know, I kind of agree with Facebook. And, hey, listen, everybody's got a right to their own opinion. Um, now, if it's going to create violence and stuff like that, then, hey, listen, you know, rules are rules. And, and maybe we shouldn't have that up there. But in general, I think that we shouldn't have any censorship. Once we start censoring one thing or one platform, we're going to start censoring them all. And then where do we stop censoring things? It's not right. It's going to, it, we might as well call ourselves China. That's what communists do. They censor things. In China, they censor what these people are getting on their internet. They censor what app you can have on your phone. That's not right. They censor media. You know, when we start censoring things, that starts breaking our, our, our First Amendment. Okay, right. That's something we're born with. That's our amendments. That's our constitutional right. And that's what it is. I didn't see anybody complaining, and I would not complain about it, about protests. Or about, I mean, I've heard about rallies from one side. I guess everybody complains about another. But that's our opinion, too. That's what we should be able to talk about. You know, that's the problem. People say, you know, like, you need to listen, or you need to stop, or this and that, or we can't talk about it. The whole point is to talk about it. Get the problems. Put them on the table. Start sorting through those problems. Don't put them to the backside. Don't just cave in. We need to talk about things to get resolutions. It's like me being upset about something and taking it out on everybody. And like, shut up. You're not allowed to say anything about what I'm, I'm mad about. No, we should talk about it. We should find a resolution. We should find the root of the problem and really get into it. And this has to deal with everything, okay? So at that point, we need to talk about it. We need to come together because, man, there's so much separation out there. It's ridiculous. I got friends that don't want to talk to other friends or family members anymore because of something they've seen on Facebook or something that somebody said and this and that. You know, I just can't believe that we've even come to this point. Uh, you know, and it's not, it's not about racism. I'm not even talking about that because it is out there. Well, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about mass. People are fighting about mass right now. It is kind of crazy. It's really ridiculous. I see some of these postings. People must not even read what they, they reshare. Or they might not even look up the credibility of that post. Okay? And don't count on Facebook to tell you if it's true or not every time. Because that's where other people go by. Oh, they didn't put a false on my, my post. It must be true. Are we, are we serious right now? You, 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 some people, it's just kind of crazy. So, listen. In that stance, I really want to bring up the Facebook thing because it's a censorship. Now, the flip side of this, do I think Facebook cares? I don't think so. I'm just being honest with you. Facebook was around without advertisers a long time before. And they made, they, they're making money on advertisers no matter what. They're going to make up an advertising. It just is what it is. And are these companies going to lose out? Probably. They're probably going to lose out a lot of money. Even the money they're not investing, they're saving right now, they're probably going to lose out. There's going to be somebody out there. Now, people are not going to stop buying their products. They're going to go out there and buy their products. I remember when the PPP thing came out, and that was payroll protection program, that a lot of these big companies like Ruth Chris got the PPP. And people were really upset about it. And they should have been, right? Um, but at that point, people were like, we're going to, we're going to, you know, we're just going to boycott Ruth Chris. Ruth Chris is never going to be around. Man, Ruth Chris is banging right now. I, I've seen people posting out that told me, uh, you know, that they were going to boycott Ruth Chris and Ruth Chris taking pictures. 
last week I see that. I started laughing. I'm just like, dude, it's just like the NFL too. You know, like the people were, were mad. Like, oh, you know, they, you know, do I think that people should kneel? That's a whole different debate. But that's their right constitutionally, right? But a lot of people are like, I'm not going to watch the NFL no more. NFL is going to die. Dude, the NFL is coming back this year. I, and with COVID-19, they're probably going to come back. You know, it is what it is. So just, I guess, you know, don't jump on the bandwagon without really having a stance or really, you know, believing what, what you're going to defend on Facebook or share and stuff like that. And, and don't just try to go on there and, like I said, be a keyboard gangster, everybody. It's just not right. I think that people should talk about things. There should be healthy debates about things, and we should come to resolutions about things. And that is just my personal opinion, and you can have yours. And that's what makes us American, and that's what makes it right. It's awesome. We can talk about things. We can resolve things. We can get to a better place. But we got to talk about it, guys. We have to talk about all these things and all the misinformation out there. You know, to me, it's it, it, being in the health care industry with Type Medical Center and Having a lot of patients around the country and seeing exactly what you guys are seeing from the CDC, from the WHO, all this misinformation, all this back and forth garbage. I mean, even in the beginning when they told us not to wear masks, now it's getting mandated. Do I think it's right? Hey, that's up for debate. I think that we should do whatever we possibly can for each other to help slow this spread. You know, and that's really what it is. I think a lot of us including me, came out of the first or this first lockdown and we thought, hey, listen, things are going to be a lot better. Things are going to be safe. We flatten this curve. We're on our way out of this thing. And then what happens? We knew cases were going to spike. So, I mean, at that point, we, we, we kind of knew, knew the future before coming out of it. Uh, and we're, we're in this predicament right now. But I, I think that if we did adhere to some of the things that they told us to do by coming out of lockdown, then I think that we'd be in a better place. And that's my personal opinion again. I think that, hey, listen, if we did do the social distancing and we did do the face mask for a little bit, I think that we would have we would have flattened things a little bit more and things would have been a lot better. But who knows? We're not going to know now. We're in this predicament and we just got to ride on and go forward and progress. But I do know that I used to, when this thing opened up, we went to a couple restaurants and at that point, I think that those restaurants, you know, the, the, a lot of people came up positive in some of the restaurants we went to, and that spread a lot. You know, nightclubs were open. People weren't adhering to bars and stuff like that and just packing it in. They were trying, you know, I don't know, maybe not, maybe some of the owners of some of these places were not policing it like they should, uh, or they you know, were just trying to get revenue back up. I understand that because a lot of people were hurt by that, but I think that's created a, a bigger issue for us, and I think we're going to have to get through this. What up, Victor Champagne? How you doing? Real West Clay, Staten, Travis C. What's going on? Guys, thank you guys for joining me on Facebook and Instagram. We talked about thymosin alpha one. We talked about being healthy to being physically fit or being both. And what it is, United Airlines, American Airlines opened up full capacity on their air uh, their airplanes, which is crazy. The new COVID drug, Rendesivir, the cost of this drug, you know, does it, does it make sense? I think it does. You know, um, talked about Facebook and advertisers pulling out huge advertisers. And Facebook literally lost over $7 billion. Think about that. Not million. Billion. It's a lot of money. So at that point, they, 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 haven't, they haven't changed things, you know, at all. So I don't think that they're really going to hurt that bad. We'll see. And only the future will tell. Another thing is, is COVID-19. COVID-19 is very serious, guys, out there. I want you guys to know that. Um, you know, I haven't told anybody until now, but literally me and Sharice have been in quarantine for over, I think, 14 days now or something like that. Close, reaching up there. Um, we did test positive. So at that point, you guys are the first to know. I wanted to come up on it here. Me and Sharice are going to do a video about what our experience was, what medications we took. Um, now, me, I was asymptomatic. No problems, really, right? Luckily, we had testing that we had for our office. So at that point, we got the test right away. I didn't get to come in contact uh, with many people at all. So that was good. Me and Sharice, my son, has became positive too as well. He became positive. Got it from us. Okay. Now, there's some weird things going on with this. And the reason I brought this up was this. Was some people are coming back positive and some people are coming back negative. Now, some people are coming back negative on the first run and then coming back positive later on. And even if they had symptoms right away on the first test. 
some people are not, you know, in the same household becoming positive along with negative people. So it's just a lot of things out there, you know, and it does really determine on how your test was taken. You know, the nasal swabs getting done by lab, like not in lab court, by practitioners and stuff like that, or what we've ran um, are the best ways to do it right now. So at that point, the rapids, I don't know about, but I do know that these tests that, that LabCorp does do um, as far as processing these samples, the way that the sample is taken has to be done correctly or else you might get a false negative. So it's really, really serious um, to do or know. Um, now I know some of these, these kits are coming to people's houses or businesses are swabbing their employees and it's really key for them to be able to do this correctly. And if you swabbed, and you came up with a negative, but you're having symptoms, you guys need to watch out. Because later on, you guys can become positive, you could be shedding this virus, and you guys could be hurting other people out there. You might even be asymptomatic, like me, and at that point, running around and you're infecting people. It's very serious. I wouldn't even swab myself because I didn't have any symptoms, but Sharice was sick with pneumonia. So at that point, when she swabbed her second time, I said, you know what? You might as well swab me too. And at that point, I can really find out what's going on. So we're going to go over this. Now, me, like I said, I've gotten through this thing. Knock on wood. Pretty good. So far, so good. Now, I haven't got to train in two weeks because I'm being responsible and I don't want to go out. And I want to make sure that I isolate. And I think we have a special guest. So we're going to do a video. But So Sharice is here. I'm sick and I've been sick for... 17 days with 17 days. pneumonia and COVID and they think I might have a viral type of meningitis yeah, just... that made it into my central nervous system. So it's been really hard for me to breathe and it's just, um, I've, I've had trouble seeing, walking, talking. I've been on nebulizer treatment, steroids, antibiotics. Um, swelling in my face, my back, bruising, like where my kidneys are at and just, just can't, I had been embedded for like four days. So I just, I overheard it cause I am still trying to work a little bit. That's been really hard. All of you guys know out there, like how hard I work and like I push through pretty much everything. I've been through like surgeries for my endometriosis and I've been through like, holy hell water, but like, this has honestly been the sickest I've ever been in my life. And like, I really want to make sure I overheard it and I'm stepping in to tell you guys like how bad this has like been on me specifically. So I need you guys to take it real serious because it's serious. And I'm really lucky that we have access to like nebulizer treatments and stuff like that. And, um, the antibiotics and chest x-rays and blood work and stuff like that. I'm also on baby aspirin to make sure that I didn't get any blood clots and stuff because I was getting heart palpitations and my lips were going numb and I couldn't feel my feet. I'm still getting swelling in my legs, so I can't really walk around too much. Um, it's hard to think straight and just sometimes just, I, I can't drive. I can't, I literally can't do anything. So uh, this is the first I've ever felt this way. And I'm now just sharing it with you guys. Uh, first time ever. So uh, hi everybody. <laughs> but I do, uh, I definitely wanted to share with you guys cause it's definitely been the most miserable 17 days of my life. So I'm sharing it with you guys and I need you guys to take it serious. Cause it's really like, like the worst thing I've ever been through ever. So, uh, yeah, guys, it's pretty serious out there. And I see a lot of people, like I said, they're spewing, hey, listen, this ain't that bad. It's uh, it's nothing. It's like a little flu, a little cold. You get some, some, some little symptoms and you're over it. It's not true. It's not true. I don't care what anybody says out there. Uh, and she's a proof, you know. And honestly, guys, if we didn't have tight medical center and I didn't employ medical providers like doctors and I didn't have these guys in my back pocket, and I didn't have access to these medications, nebulizers, and all this other good stuff that Type Medical Center does. She should probably have been in the hospital, guys. I'm not even joking around. I mean, I was, I was to the point where I, I listen, I was going to take her just to make sure, guys. And, you know, and being in the hospital by yourselves, think about that. 
You know, she's never been to the hospital by herself. And you know, I'd fight and kick and scream before I leave that hospital. You know, and, uh, you know, at that point, it's pretty serious. And I don't want to see anybody have to go through this with any of their loved ones, their family members, or anything like that. So people being irresponsible and going out, um, if you're sick, I don't care. It, some people told me, oh, I'm sick, but I can't get tested. I'm going to go out anyway. You guys are really irresponsible. I'm just letting you guys know that because it's serious and it's affecting a lot of people. And I know a lot more other people that have been sick or in the hospital because of COVID-19 that I know personally, okay? I know them personally. Like, and I don't, I don't really hang out a lot of people. I don't have a huge circle. So that small circle getting affected really affects me. Uh, at that point, COVID-19 just doesn't give you some of these different symptoms. It can affect the central nervous system. And it affects the central nervous system in a, in a variety of different ways. From your thinking, to your smell, to your taste, right? That, that affects your central nervous system. When you're fevers, you can have hallucinations. It's really crazy. Foggy thinking or getting confused. It's, it's nuts how, this, how this, this virus works, man. And we don't even know what the long-term effects are going to be, if there is going to be any long-term effects, especially messing with the central nervous system. We're getting the spinal fluid or cerebral fluid. At that point, we're talking about some serious, serious stuff. And you know what they're doing in the hospital? They're actually doing spinal taps to see if you have this, the viral meningitis. And it's pretty serious when they have to do a spinal tap on you guys. It's not something you're going to want to have to go through or want to go through, but they will make you do it in the hospital and you won't have, you won't, you won't have a say in it, man. They're going to do it to you guys just to make sure. So at that point, I want to make sure that everybody out there is doing their part. Please social distance. I know you guys don't like masks. I don't like masks. I don't want to wear a mask around. I'm going to wear a mask around all after this. I promise you. I promise you that I'm going to wear it before I'm going to wear it afterwards. I'm going to social distance if I possibly can with everybody just to make sure. Now me and Sharice have both been cleared by the health department. We got letters from the health department saying that we can go back to work and that we're cleared. We stayed in quarantine for over 14 days about there now or uh, more. And we're going to stay in for another four or five, just in case at least to the end of the week. I want to make sure we're three weeks in at least. So at that point, I want to make sure you guys are on this. We're going to make a video, a separate video. We're going to talk about a lot of these different things that we went through personally. What hopefully you guys don't have to go through personally. I'm going to go through facts with you guys and not miss. Because some of the stuff out there, now that I've been through it, I know. And now she's been through it, she knows. But there's a lot of different people out there going through a lot of different symptoms. And at that point, we need to share this information. And I don't want information shared from people who have not been through COVID-19 unless you're a doctor or have dealt with a patient. Otherwise, you really don't have any, you have no ground to talk. All you guys are spitting facts. You think you are, but have you been through COVID-19? So at that point, if you go through COVID-19, you can chip in on the conversation. Then I'll listen to you guys. You know, it's like you haven't walked in these shoes. Until you walk in these shoes, you really don't know. So please, guys, be safe. You know, and if you guys are just so hound on going out. I totally understand, but please wear a mask. It's not stupid. It, it possibly could slow a little bit of the spread. And I've heard all the different things, seen all the memes out there from wearing a diaper on your face all day, you know, to oxygen levels, CO2 levels. I mean, man, I've heard it all, guys. And I'm just telling you guys, please do it. Little Peter is okay. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate that. So my son... 11 years old, positive, COVID-19. Him, no symptoms at all, dude. It was it, like, like it never even happened. And the crazy thing about it was this, was we swabbed, right? And our, me and Sharice's test came back first. We quarantined. And, and I swabbed my dad, who was a, a new, he's a high-risk patient, diabetes, Right? renal like he's in kidney like failure almost right he's in you know it's just it's a bad stage you know he's got all these different things that are going with some cardiovascular issues which is another one okay so heart disease so he's a really really high risk over 65 <laughs> it's crazy right so he's still in the house with my son my son's downstairs playing video games all day thank god and then we find out that he's positive. We go and get him immediately, swap my dad a second time just to make sure no symptoms from him and came back with a second negative, thank God. But Peter, 
he's been like, nothing's ever happened. And I got to praise God for that. I was really scared for my son. I was really scared for my dad. You know, for me, I'm like, listen, I'm pretty healthy. I'm going to get through this. I thought she should be the same way. And she got affected really bad. Cough, uh, pneumonia, uh, fevers, uh, you know, foggy thinking, you know, her equilibrium. I mean, eyes, like, um, like moving, moving rapidly, like not being able to focus. She got really hit with most of the big symptoms. Thank God she didn't have to be hospitalized or, you know, and, and go on ventilation. And I think the only reason that happened was because of what we had for resources. I got to do the chest x-ray in my own medical center. I had medical doctors that we could call 24-7, neurologists 24-7. So at that point, you know, we're lucky to have these resources that usually the general public or you guys don't have. So just make sure if you guys get COVID-19 or you guys think you have symptoms uh, or you're getting bad with COVID-19 and you don't want to go out, you guys go, man. I, I hate to say it, but you guys got to go if you guys think that it's going to be that serious or you guys are getting that sick. You can't breathe. You need to go just to make sure, man. You know, I mean, because they can definitely help you out with some of these different medications in the hospital. And listen, if you need rendezvous, take rendezvous if you can get it. Force them. And if you do go to the hospital, I'm telling you guys this, those people are your employees. So you treat them as such. If they tell you no, you tell them you want it now. You get on Facebook Live and say, I'm going to tell everybody in the world what you guys are doing not to help me and help my health out. And I'm usually not that guy. But in this circumstance, it's a life or death situation. I would be that guy. Just letting you know. All right. So what else we got? <clears throat> 52 minutes in. So we got eight more minutes left, guys. So we do have somebody up here, up cycle uh, creations. So he had COVID-19. He was wearing a mask. Uh, he lost his taste and smell for a month. Oh, man, it's crazy. Crazy. My daughter was sick in the summer. She had it. At the time, they called it flu B. So <clears throat> if you think you've had COVID-19, I would definitely tell you guys to do an antibody test. Now, when you're doing an antibody test, do it through a reputable lab. Don't just do the prick of the finger, the quick one. Go get the blood drawn, and they usually send you into a lab corp or a quest, and they do an IgG antibody test. And at this point, it should tell you if you've had antibodies or your child has had antibodies. Now, that's a good thing to a certain extent. If you get it and you don't have any symptoms, thank God you got through it or you've gotten through it, thank God. Your kid's gotten through it, thank God. Now, you have antibodies. We don't know how long the antibodies are going to last, okay? That means that if this virus comes in contact with you again, your immune system creates these antibodies, they start attacking the virus and get rid of it. We don't know how long these antibodies are going to last, but you will have antibodies, hopefully. At that point, these kids are going back to school. Here in Florida, just three weeks ago, me and Sharice were having a conversation. What do we do with our kids? Because they gave us three options. Option one, they go back to school, right? Regular class. Option two, they do their work at home, and if they have any questions or concerns, they contact the teacher. Option three. They're in the class, but online. So that means there's probably going to be a camera on the teacher, and they're probably going to be in the classroom like that, but sitting virtually at their computer going through the class. Now, after this, we didn't know what we were going to do before this, but after this, my kid's going back to school. Uh, I'm just telling you guys that. Most of the kids are having no problems um, with COVID-19. Thank God. Now, like I said, we don't know down the line yet. We'll see. Hopefully, there's nothing that's going to happen to us. We're not going to turn to zombies or die or something like that. Please, God. And if I become a zombie, you guys got you guys got the permission right now. Shoot me in the head. You heard that, all right? So we got some video you guys can shoot me in the head, right? Big Deke Warner. So my man Deke Warner is getting on here. And we got some shows coming up with Deke. Sorry, Deke. I've been sick. We've been sick, me and Charisse. I'm, I'm quarantined right now. I'll be out very shortly. But, uh, you know, we've got some big shows coming up with Deke here in Orlando and stuff like that. Hopefully these shows are going to go on and these spikes – do not mess things up. I'm really worried about that. I'm just being honest with all you guys. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if these guys are going to retreat. I think right now it really doesn't matter. I think, you know, we're going to have to get through this and people are going to have to be safe. That means wearing masks, doing hand san you know, sanitizer or cleaning your hands, washing your hands if possible, doing the social distancing. You know, I haven't been a proponent of all this social distancing and stuff like that until now. A real, really big proponent of it. You know, I don't want to see anybody else get sick, especially like Sharice did. 
Like, you know, and she was in the hospital, man, I, I could just, and some of my friends I talked to in the hospital, when they were in the hospital, I'm really feeling for them. And I don't want anything to happen to other people like that, you know, and don't just worry about yourself. Don't be selfish out there. I know some people are like, oh, but I don't want to stay indoors for 14 days. Listen, man, if you go out, that's irresponsible. And you could be getting somebody very, very sick, or you could possibly kill somebody. You're walking around all the way with a load of gun. Oh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. You don't know who you're going to affect. I mean, that's the thing. You bring it home. One of my one of my good friends, his son infected his mom. Mom infected him. Didn't they, the kid had no symptoms? Nineteen years old. It is what it is. So please, guys, be safe. Thank you guys for joining me on this. Let's go over the poll real quick, and then we're gonna get off. All right, Art. Right. I know we've been going for an hour. All right. Have you guys ever tried the immune system boosting therapies? Right. Um, on this, so what was the main one, Art? Because I can't see the board for where I'm at. So 61% of you guys have never tried any immune system boosting therapies. You guys better get on it, man. You guys better get on it. You guys better start eating a whole bunch of fruit with antioxidants in it. Get yourself some injectable oral vitamin C and zinc. You know, glutathione injectable, that's the best way. Do not do it oral. You're not going to get a good effect from it. I promise you. Um, please, guys, thymosin alpha-1, therapy of the week, very important, especially with viruses, infections. This is very, very important. So look into it. We can help you out. Have us. Let us help you out. Be safe. Call or text 727-389-3220. What if they start doing shows via online and the audience judge like American Idol? That'd be kind of cool. What was what was no? Now I'm gonna answer that question real quick. Sixty-nine percent said no. Unbelievable, guys! Unbelievable, guys! Please get on immune system boosting therapy. I don't care if it's with us or somebody else or an oral uh, medication or, or oral therapy or supplement or whatever the hell you guys want to do. It's important. You know, I, 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 I'm not even talking about COVID-19. I'm talking about just in general. Just in general, guys, all right? All right, so what if they start doing shows via online and let the audience judge like American Idol? That'd be kind of cool. I agree with you 100% on this. Now, I actually brought this up to Jose Santiago, who's doing the Iron Bay Classic, which I'm a main sponsor of, too, as well, because we're kind of worried about this. Huh? Two-minute warning. All right, so I think it's a great idea. I know how to set it up. So if any promoters out there want to do it, let me know. We can definitely do it, all right? Guys, check out TitanMedicalCenter.com. Keep it locked to our social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter. Please, guys, go subscribe to YouTube. ton of videos on there. Hit the all notifications button so you guys get all the new updates of everything that's coming out. Now, like I said, guys, me and Sharice are going to do a video specifically on COVID-19, our experiences our son's experiences, what may help you guys. This is going to be very, very important. I want you guys to tune in. It's been another great Titan Talk Tuesday. Me and Drew will see you Friday. Undisclosed, okay? And uh, we'll be getting into a whole bunch of the Titan lifestyle subjects. Love you guys. Thank you guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Have a good one. Be safe.